Hello everyone, are you ready for some serious racing action? Here we are in Spielberg at the Red Bull Ring in Austria and we are psyched for this race because only three races to go and the man who actually has his 26th pole position in his career is this young man, René Rast. Congratulations, he also beat Bernd Schneider. That's uh, for sure your new personal record and also you have a great ambition to go fastest in this race because your wife is expecting the baby anytime so you need to win this race and go home as soon as possible. Did I um, sum summarize that correctly? Exactly, yes. Uh, the, the faster I go in the race, the earlier I can be home. So that's the target, obviously, to win the race and be quick at home. Uh, as you said, I'm uh, waiting uh, for my second child and it can, can happen, happen any second. So I'm a bit nervous, more nervous for that than for the race. But uh, obviously, uh, we want to finish the race on a high and then focus on the rest. And in regards to the weather, does that make you a bit nervous or, I mean, it says that maybe in the next half an hour it will start to rain? Yeah, that makes me even more nervous. Uh, yesterday we saw that our pace in the, ra in the race in the wet wasn't that great, but in the, in the dry it is. So we hope for a dry race, obviously, but nobody can obviously foresee the weather. So we have to pray that it stays dry. All right, well, best of luck and crossing my fingers not only for the race. Thank, Thank you. you so much, René. And here are your commentators. Thanks very much, Verena. Great to hear from René Rast then. A record breaker now in terms of pole positions in DTM. 25 times a race winner. And uh, if uh, anybody needed any more incentive to go even quicker, well, there it is for René Rast, expecting his, uh, his next child anytime soon. So quicker the race is done, he says, quicker he can get back and concentrate on family life. So he's on pole position and his teammate at Schubert Motorsport, Shelton van der Linde, is second on the grid. He's fourth in the championship. At the moment, he's 62 points adrift of the championship leader. At the end of this race, there'll only be 56 still available when we get to Hockenheim. So he's got to close the gap by at least six points to stay in the title race. Funnily enough, René Rast is still in the championship fight just about. Uh, he's seventh in the championship. He got three points for pole, which means he's 81 points adrift and there are 81 points still available coming into the start of this race. So René Rast, Shelton van der Linde on the front row of the grid. Jack Aitken in the Ferrari is uh, third. Thomas Prining, second in the championship, is going to be fourth on the grid. The championship leader, Mirko Bortolotti, is back in ninth place on the grid. And there's only six points between them as we go back to Verena down on the grid. And starting in P4 is Thomas Prining. Thomas, uh, three more races to go in this championship. At the moment, you're six points behind the leader of the championship, but you're also in a better, better starting position. So at this point, are you just hopefully going to win this race because it's your home race? Is that your main ambition right now? There's always, obviously, the ambition, not only at home, especially, of course, this weekend, but uh, I always want to win. That's why I'm here. Um, but in the end, it's going to be a tough fight. Uh, we saw yesterday how, how close everything is. It's not going to be easy to pass the guys ahead. They're really quick too. And um, yeah, I just hope for a, for a clean race with a lot of points in the end. Last year, you managed to win here. So hopefully that's a good omen. Yeah, for sure. Last year, we also had a similar day on Saturday like we had now. And uh, I'm just hoping for the best. Looking at the weather, hoping for rain or hoping it for it to stay dry? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, yesterday I was hoping for rain and then it didn't rain that much and I don't know. I'm, I'm just excited to get racing, uh, excited to race in front of my home crowd and I'll, I'll go full send, that's clear. I'm sure you will. Thank you so much, Thomas. And now we're going to go all the way back, well not all the way, but to um, P9 because there we've got Mirko Bortolotti, who is the leader of the championship, as I mentioned before. He is six points ahead of Thomas Pining, but you can be sure that it's going to be super tight. In fact, it is a super tight championship. DTM 2023 has really been so crazy. And um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, but it's really we've had so many nail biting moments in this championship. And you can be sure. Um, that also this race is going to be equally exciting and my cameraman is really having a hard time following me here because uh, it's just really full and people here are excited for this race to get started and I'm sure Mirko Bottolotti is also very excited to get into the car. He's starting in P9 and he has six points to uh, ahead of Thomas Pining and hello there Mirko. You seem as cool as always. Thank you. You too. <laughs> but inside, I mean, I know every single time I ask you, it's all about the championship. At the moment, you're leading with six points. But at this point, focusing on the race, focusing also in the back of your head on the championship, what is it like? No, I just focus on the race. We got, uh, you know, uh, 
three races to go. Today, obviously, it's as important as all the other races we've had so far. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in that position. So we just have to be super pragmatic and uh, go and do our job. Let's see what the weather does. Could be another big factor today. Um, let's, uh, let's see what happens and uh, let's enjoy. Right, do enjoy, have fun and uh, yeah, best of luck for the race, Mirko. And now we are ready to get racing, only three races to go in this season. So let's do it. Here are your commentators. Thanks very much indeed, Verena. Verena, Vreek down on the grid, catching up with the top two in the championship. Tommy Prining and then Mirko Bortolotti. The star of the race yesterday was undoubtedly Ricardo Fellow, who went from 26th to 3rd. But perhaps the move of the race was the one from Mirko Bortolotti around the outside of Marco Wittmann coming out of turn six, which involved putting two wheels of the Lamborghini through the gravel trap. Today is a very different day, though, in terms of the weather. In the dry, in practice, and in the test session on Thursday, the Audis were struggling. In free practice, the highest-placed Audi was 20th, and that was uh, Ricardo Fella in free practice, too. So they knew it was going to be tough. Yesterday, of course, the rain came uh, became a factor in both qualifying and the race. But in the dry qualifying today, the Audis struggling. Ricardo Fella, the best of the Audis, but he's back in 13th place on the grid. You've got Kelvin van der Linde, who won the race yesterday, and he's even further back, back in 17th place on the grid. And uh, yesterday's pole sitter, Lauren Heinrich, who finished second in the race in the Porsche. Pole yesterday, 20th today, just to show you that it is indeed a very different day. The BMWs were expecting to be strong here in the dry conditions. They are first, second and fifth. You're just seeing Marco Wittmann with uh, its uh, second best qualifying of the year. See if he can get his first podium for Project One Racing. And uh, there'll be uh, hope as well at Grasser Racing because Clement Schmidt, who didn't have a great day yesterday, is sixth on the grid. Uh, they are the home team here, uh, one of the three Austrian drivers, but the team based extremely local to the circuit. So six points between the top two in the championship. We saw the championship lead ebbing and flowing and changing last time out at the Saxon Ring. We started the weekend with nine points between the top two. Thomas Prining closed the gap yesterday. Sixth place, though, could have been better. He was uh, told to uh, let Marrow Engel back through through after a robust move up at turn three. In doing so, he had to let Ricardo Feller and ultimately Rennie Rast through as well. So a potential podium lost yesterday for Thomas Prining, but he did outscore Mirko Bortolotti. And as I said, he's in front of him on the grid. Uh, Chris Hartley here then at uh, Spilbo to talk you through the race action. It's gonna be another thriller. The weather, a question mark. We didn't think rain was coming, but now we hear it might. Brian Oliver, if it's anything like yesterday, you better hold on to your hats. It was an absolute belter yesterday. It was an absolute stonker. That man there, Jack Aitken, the uh, Emil Frey team, didn't make the right decision on tyres yesterday. We'll be hoping for better today. And we can go back to the grid and get more from Verena. And we're excited to have an Alpine star here because we've got the two-time uh, Olympic champion, Marcel Hirscher, here with us. And you actually managed to get uh, the chance to do a ride here because I know you're a motorsport enthusiast. So what was it like with the Audi Innovation Taxi? Well, it was really amazing, to be honest, because I'm not so into it usually. You know, the last time I've been in a race car is uh, exactly one year ago. So it is always, um, yeah, a little bit of a thrill, but um, it is a great memory and uh, unbelie unbelievable experience. And let me just ask your top speed Yes, uh, today when you had the ride, do you know? I don't know, 250, I don't know, 260, no idea. Because I, I didn't watch on the, on the speed. I, I was focused on the break point, to be honest. <laughs> I bet you were, but was that quite an uh, quite an adrenaline quick a kick? Well, it was definitely, but it is um, more experience and, and great memories uh, that are still uh, here, and I think that will left forever. Uh, I bet it will. <laughs> yeah. And who are you crossing your fingers for here? Well, it is hard to say. Uh, I mean, we have an Austrian uh, defender here. Um, hopefully, um, he will manage it. But um, weather is um, bright, uh, yeah, pretty um, unsafe at the moment. So uh, it will be a challenging race, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. Marcel, thank you so much and enjoy the race. And now it is time to get racing. So let's do it. And here are your commentators. Enjoy and hold on. Thanks very much indeed, Verena. Great to hear from Marcel Hirsch. You're very jealous he got to go in one of these cars. They can reach uh, over 260 kilometers an hour, as he said. And I'm sure the uh, former ski start would have been pretty tremendous on the downhill sections here at the Red Bull Ring. So the grid being cleared, we are almost set to go for what is going to be round 14 of DTM 2023. Race two coming up here at the Red Bull Ring.
So here we are in Austria, the penultimate weekend of the season. Three races to go, barely a spit between the top two in the championship and the most wonderful of backdrops for what promises to be another fascinating race. Let's take a look then at this uh, 4.3 kilometre long magnificent circuit with this beautiful backdrop here in the Styrian Mountains into turn one uh, at speed. It's second gear this, pretty heavy on the brakes. It's a big uphill climb out of it, so people are keen to get on the gas, and if they get on the gas too quickly, they spin the backs of the cars around. You go up to the top of the hill through turn three. It's a downhill run then into turn four, where you go from fifth gear down to first gear or second gear at about 70 kilometers an hour. Big braking zone, big overtaking opportunities. You run downhill then for most of the rest of the lap until you get to the final turn at turn 10, 130 kilometers an hour through there. And if it goes wrong there, it goes very wrong as we saw back in 2002. This is the Red Bull Ring. This is the second race of the weekend. Chris Hartley and Brian Oliver to talk you through the action with uh, Rene Rast on pole position, breaking the record this morning, 26 pole positions and uh, moving ahead of Bernd Schneider in the all-time list. He's got 25 wins to his credit. Uh, he spoke to Verena earlier and said, I've got to get on with the race because we're expecting our next child. So uh, he's going to be even quicker than uh, ever before. But a question mark here, Brian, because his Schubert Motorsport teammate, Sheldon van der Linde, is still in the championship fight. He's second on the grid. He's the biggest chance for the team to retain the drivers' championship. They won both the drivers and uh, the team's championship last year. Will he have to let Sheldon van der Linde through? That is your front row of the grid. Jack Aitken third. He's due a good result. Thomas Prining in fourth place. Second in the championship will be the championship leader, maybe, going into Hockenheim. Marco Wittmann and Clement Schmidt, a really interesting third row of the grid. Front Pereira, a much better qualifying today at seventh. I engine Guen is going great guns of late. He's in the top eight once again. And the championship leader, Mirko Bortolotti, has for company, Dennis Olsen, Thomas Prining's teammate. Andrea Caldarelli and Thierry Vermeulen are 11th and 12th. That's the sixth row. Uh, yesterday's star, Ricardo Feller, 13th on the grid today. Better than yesterday. Luca Engsler is 14th. Marvin Dienst and Arjun Miney make up your eighth row of the grid. Then to row nine, yesterday's winner, Kelvin van der Linde, back in 17th today. Lucas Stoltz, 18th as well, uh, out of position. Then Tim Heinemann and Laren Heinrich on pole yesterday, Laren, 20th on the grid today. That's DTM for you. Lucas Auer and Patrick Niederhauser are on the 11th row of the grid. And then on row 12, Maro Engel is on pole here for one of the races last year, but he's 23rd with Sandro Holzen for company. David Schumacher and Yusuf Vega make up the penultimate row of the grid. And then we've got Matthias Drew and Alessio Deleda making up the final row. 28 cars to start the race. Cloud coming in, it's overcast. There's a potential threat of rain, uh, but Brian Oliver, for now, it is dry. And if it's dry, the BMWs and the Ferraris are going to be hard to beat. Yes, whatever the opposite is to a rain dance, Rene Rast and Sheldon van der Linde will be doing it. Rene Rast, now, have we ever had a season in DTM where he hasn't won a race? He wants to win this one. He's on pole position. He's in the best possible position to do that. But he did speculate several months ago that if Sheldon van der Linde was a little way ahead in the points, he might be requested to give way to help his teammate. Both drivers will be remembering the GT Masters race that happened here this time last year, where Ben Green and Niklas Kruten took back-to-back -back victories across the weekend in a Schubert Motorsport BMW. Those cars, turbocharged at this altitude, are mighty. So, uh, Rene Rast with his eyes on the prize, looking for his first win of the season, his first win since Imola last year. Uh, so more than 12 months since Rennie Rast won a race in the DTM and also looking for his first win as a BMW driver. Marcel Hershey, we heard from him on the grid, the eight-time World Cup ski champion is about to show the cars and the drivers the way to the start of this race with the Start Your Engines board held aloft. A big crowd here at Spielberg to witness what could be another thriller. Every single point now counts in this championship. At the moment, mathematically, Rene Rast, seventh, Kelvin van der Linde, sixth, Lucas Stoltz uh, in fifth, Shelton van der Linde, fourth, Ricardo Feller, third, Thomas Spining, second, and championship leader Mirko Bortolotti are still left in the championship fight, but that could be whittled down to maybe just three of them going into Hockenheim, depending on how this race goes. One thing is for sure, Shelton van der Linde will want to win this race and give himself the best chance of staying in the championship fight. The defending champion carries one of our onboard cameras. He starts from the outside of row one, and they're all on the slick Pirelli tyres. 60 minutes plus one lap of racing, a formation lap, then a rolling start, 
There is a mandatory pit stop in the middle 20 minutes of the race. We have to change all four wheels. No refueling. We have to change the rears first, then the fronts. Yesterday, we saw some pretty stunning pit stop times uh, with six seconds to seven seconds for about 10 uh, driver cha uh, 10 uh, changes for the drivers with uh, Windward Racing once again being the quickest. David Schumacher's pit stop 6.08 se seconds stationary. And Mill Frey Racing have been good at the pit stops as well. Jack Aitken had a 6.3 second pit stop. And Kelvin van der Linde, his pit stop and his in and out lap helped him win the race yesterday. That was the third quickest pit stop at 6.60 seconds. There is a championship for the quickest pit stops as well. Uh, the quickest pit stop in each race gets three points, two for second and one for the third quickest. And Emil Frey Racing have got 16 points in the Pit Stop Challenge Championship. Winwood have got 16 as well. And SSR Performance are uh, just behind on 15. A nice little addition to the DTM Championship. Uh, the Drivers' Championship you've just seen and we've talked about. The Teams' Championship is very tight as well. Uh, with Mante, uh, EMA, uh, Abt Sportsline and SSR Performance split by just four points. Mante moved into the Teams' Championship lead on 256 points yesterday. Abt moved into second on 255, just one behind. And SSR dropped to third on 252. And Porsche lead the manufacturer standings. 355 points, 35 clear of Lamborghini with third place to Mercedes and just three races to go. Uh, so the cars then are making their way into the final sector and the safety car very shortly will begin to peel away from Rene Rast and from the man that's next to him and hoping to get his second win of the season, Sheldon van der Linde, the Schubert Motorsport teammate. Great performance in qualifying from both drivers. Jack Aitken, not worried about championship points, will be looking to get uh, his second win in his first season of DTM as well. And for Thomas Prining, he's got to try and uh, also calculate his moves because he's got the championship to think about. For now, the teams have done their job. Until we get to the pit stops, all they can do is sit tight, hold on, and watch what unfolds during the uh, first section of this race. You're on board with Sheldon van der Linde. That's what it looks like to be alongside a three-time champion Rene Rast in the blue BMW, your pole sitter for round 14 of DTM 2023. We're about to get into action then. Here we go. They come out of the final turn. The red lights come on. And round 14 of DTM 2023 is go here as they charge across the line and thunder uphill towards turn one. Really good start for Rene Rast. Look at the battle for third and fourth. The Ferrari of Jack Aitken side by side with Thomas Prining. The two BMWs hold station. It's Rast from, oh, we've got a spin from Kelvin van der Linde in the background. Was he helped along the way? He's going to be stone last. Not the first time. Uh, the first corner has been dramatic in a race this year for Kelvin van der Linde. Go back to the Nürburgring. It happened twice to him. Side by side for the lead of the race between Rene Rast and Sheldon van der Linde. Thomas Prining has got third place. Jack Aitken has been sucked back into the pack. He's going to be fifth or sixth, I think, when they come out of the first turn. Clement Schmidt's made a good start. In the Lamborghini, he's fourth. Marco Pippen is fifth. Andrew Gouin's made a good start in sixth place as he charges through as well. Mirko Bortolotti with smoke coming from the back of his car. Now, is that bodywork damage? If it is, he might be okay. It might just be bodywork rubbing on the tyre, in which case it could get away. Uh, burn off and he'll be okay, but it's a concern as the leaders come through. Thomas Priding with a good start, the worst start of all, I'm afraid. We saw it in the background was for Kelvin van der Linde, yesterday's race winner, Brian. And at the moment, he's all the way at the back of the field. And he's got a long day ahead of him. There's a lot of jostling at the back. It was Tim Heinemann who got together with Kelvin van der Linde. That's been looked at by our race stewards, but he's a long way back. A lot of attention on Mirko Bortolotti. Let's hear his team radio. Silence. Silence reigns. So we don't get to hear the, uh, the team radio. He's, but slow. he's slowing he's slow. down. So Mirko Bortolotti, the championship leader, pulls into the pit lane. Disaster. Disaster for him. If it stays like this, if he can't get back out again, he ain't going to score any points today. And then likely he'll lose the championship lead. He's been so, so consistent this year. So he had one non-finish that was in fact a non-start they're looking at the right rear it's a puncture it's bodywork rubbing against the tyre so he's going to get back out at least he can still score points he will still be in the race 
But he's got a huge, huge task ahead of him now as he drops right to the back of the field. And what he needs more than anything now is for, at some point, there to be a safety car, Brian. That is a classic first lap here at the Red Bull Ring. You can see Marco Wittmann in fifth place. He looks to the inside of Clemens Schmid. Now towards turn four, he goes to the outside. Is he going to go the long way around? Clemens Schmid, better under braking in the GRT Grasser Lamborghini, the local team. But also there, Ai Chan Guen wants to jump in. If these two get together, you can see him looking to the inside and to the outside of Marco <laughs> Wittmann using all the track and a little bit more. The Emil Frey racing car in there as well. Both Emil Frey racing mm. cars there as well. So Jack Aitken goes going the wrong way down the pack in the opening stages of this race. Yeah, from third he's wound up down in seventh, but his teammate Thierry Vimulin has had a good start. He's gained several positions up into ninth position, and his Ferrari. They're both had bad days yesterday. No points for Jack Aitken and a retirement after a collision with Clement Schmidt for Thierry Vimulin. But the form for Thierry has been excellent of late, so let's see if he can uh, put that right. Sparks flying as Clement Schmidt goes way out wide. Still ahead of the uh, big Project 1 BMW. Two-time champion Marco Wittmann, Renny Rastley, Sheldon van der Linde second, Tommy Brining in third in his own race. In his own race, Clement Schmidt in fourth place, Marco Wittmann in fifth. Anjan Guin, whose uh, form of late has been excellent as well. He's there in sixth place. Eight in seventh, Olsen in eighth. Verstappen, uh, Verstappen, <laughs> for Mullen, wrong one. And uh, Close. then in tenth place, Pereira, who is now, of course, the leading Lamborghini as we get a replay of the start. So it was Rene Rast who was first out of the block. Sheldon van der Linde, he thought about it, didn't he? He got up into turn one, and then as they came out of two and down towards turn three, he picked up a slipstream and he moved to the outside. This was Kelvin van der Linde getting together with Tim Heinemann. Mauro Engel, he would have had flashbacks of Saxon ring there as he saw a car facing in the wrong direction as he came around the corner. Fortunately, managed to avoid any contact, but a classic, typical first lap here at the Red Bull Ring. Yeah, Lucas Stotts going to the left, and uh, Marrow Engel hard on the brakes <laughs> to avoid A, going into the back of Tim Einemann, and then B, collecting the spinning uh, Audi. Ricardo Feller gave a little uh, love tap there to call the rally. This was the rear-facing camera, and there around you saw going Kelvin van der Linde after that contact. This is looking back from Sheldon van der Linde. There was contact between Jack Aitken and Thomas Brining as Jack uh, sent wide into Thomas's Porsche, but only a, a glancing blow. The hill thundered up there into turn three. You can see Lucas Auer, Arjun Mighty just behind, Marvin Dietz as well, all getting absolutely stuck in there as they try to get themselves up the order on the middle of the pack. And there, you can see the remains of the right rear flailing on that slow-mo from Mirko Bortolotti's Lamborghini, which is why the championship leader is stone last at the moment, back in 28th place. The top 15 score points. But Mirko will be going for it now. He hasn't got to worry about defending points, defending positions. He is just going to be on full attack mode. Let's get some reaction down in the pit lane with Farina. And I'm here with Mario Schubauer. Uh, Mario, can you tell us what happened to Bottolotti and what the state is? Can you explain it? To be honest, we don't see it at the moment. There's no very detailed onboard camera, so I don't know it. You get a hit from anywhere. And we had a puncture on the <laughs> rear left side. But uh, yeah, we continue now with the plan. All right, so just hope, hopefully, that the car is going to last. Maybe hope for rain. All right, maybe. Okay, Mario, thank you very much. Best of luck. Back to you. Thanks, Rina. Mario Schubauer there, the team principal at SSR Performance, who run the three Lamborghinis, including that of the championship leader. That's Dennis Olsen ahead of Jack Aitken for seventh place then. So Jack uh, having a bit of a frustrating start to the race here. He's back in eighth. His teammate Thierry Vermeulen in ninth place. And then it is the first of the Lamborghinis from Pereira just behind, running out the top ten. A replay on board with Ricardo Feller. Inside, trying to get out the inside of Lucas Auer. There was contact. He didn't get fully alongside. and So Lucas was uh, tipped out wide. This is how it looked uh, from the onboard camera facing back. There is Ricardo Feller, who did lots and lots of overtaking yesterday to go from 26 to third. There was the opportunity, he tried to squeeze at the inside, but it wasn't quite on that, so a bit of contact. Our sent out wide and losing the place. So Ricardo Feller, 14th, he started 13th, he lost out a little bit on the first lap of the race, but he's gained one back now, and at the moment he's scoring two championship points. But Thomas Priding, currently in fourth place, 13 championship points. Championship leader Mirko Bortolotti is on zero, so he'll move into the championship lead from being six behind. He'll be seven in front as it stands, but we've got 53 minutes, 22 seconds of the lap to go, and anything can happen, Brian. 
Yes, uh, looking back from Ricardo Feller at Lucas Auer, he probably has got a little compliment he wishes to repay here. Marvin Dees was the one who got into the back of Mirko Bortolotti, I suspect, now on board with Lucas Auer as he sweeps her back uh, onto Ricardo Feller. So that fight is ongoing. Ricardo Feller not making quite the progress that he did uh, yesterday at the start of the race. But again, the weather might play a factor on this later on. There is Laren Heinrich. He's trying to work his way from a start that was a lot further back than he enjoyed yesterday. Goes out wide Ooh. onto the gravel. Uh, Matai Drudy, no, Patrick Niedhaus, a big part in the uh, 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 the identical car. And uh, now the two Emil Frey racing Ferraris going alongside each other as well. Vermeulen to the inside. And now Jack Aitken goes back to the inside of Terry Vermeulen. Yeah, so Vermeulen going great guns here up against former Grand Prix racer Jack Aitken. You got Pereira watching them as well. Uh, per per fellow looks like he's let our back in front, so he's down he's to, to 15th place now. So he's had to give that position back. That means he's now he's at the moment going to score one point. Uh, second place, Shelton van der Linde gets 20 points. With Bortolotti not scoring at the moment, that means, as it stands, Shelton van der Linde is 42 points adrift of the championship leader. As long as he's within 56 points at the end of this race, he'll still be in the title fight mathematically going into Hockenheim. If you can get five more points there, that would be very handy indeed. The trouble is, Reni Rast is there at the moment and leading by just over a second. Back on board with Ricardo Feller. He's got to try and wind it up again in this uh, battle with Lucas Auer for 14th place as it stands just the one point, but it's going to be hard work. They reckon the Audi not just lacking on top speed, but also the way it gets to top speed. The torque of the car struggles, the normally aspirated uh, engine. They've been asking all season for a bigger uh, air restrictor uh, for the BOP. That hasn't happened, so he, he's going to be quick in the corners, but he's going to struggle, I think, in the straights. So we've got Mirko Bortolotti absolutely stone last place at the moment, trying, trying, trying to catch everybody up, but miles behind, he needs some outside assistance really, be that rain or be it a safety car to get involved in the fights. Talking of which here is that fight between Lucas Auer and his home race of course, the first ever Austrian to win a DTM race and he has got Ricardo Fella, the Swiss driver, right behind him in the number seven Abt Sportsline Audi. Abt getting their 75th win of the DTM yesterday courtesy of Kelvin van der Linde. And Marco Bortolotti and Marvin Dees, both under investigation by the stewards. I suspect it's Marvin Dees who's the most under investigation for that incident that saw him come into the pits. Marco Bortolotti was some 43 seconds back from the lead fight the last time around. He's closing the gap in. He's got Alessio Delada ahead of him, some 22 seconds he needs to make up just to get into 27th place. So he would dearly love a safety car. Well, the good news is there's nothing wrong with the car because Bortolotti's last lap was a 129.5. The race leader, Renny Rast, 129.1. Not the quickest out there, but he's on the pace of those in the top six. The fastest lap, though, last time out, went to Shelton van der Linde in second place with a 129.089. Uh, the incident between Mirko Bortolotti uh, at the start of the race uh, is under investigation. The one which forced him, of course, to come in and pit Marvin Dinkst uh, is also under investigation for the same incident. So Marvin at the moment in the points in 13th place, just ahead of this battle between Lucas Auer and Ricardo Fella, which we go back with now as uh, they make their way out through turn six, down into turn seven at the left-hander. And then there's a little crest here that goes slightly uphill, but then it's downhill for the rest of the lap as you go to about 230 kilometers an hour, and then you brake, go down to third gear, and about 140 kilometers an hour for the next corner, the right-hander at turn nine. And you try not to run too wide coming out of the corner, go off the road too much and get a track limits infringement. Here's the view back from Lucas Hour, and there, picture in picture, you can see to the left of your screen what it looks like to ride on board with Ricardo Fella as they head up towards 240 kilometres an hour. About 100 metre mark, they hit the brakes to get out of second gear and slow the cars down to just about uh, 17 kilometres an hour before standing on the throttle again and firing it all the way uphill. Ricardo Fella is carrying an extra five kilograms of success ballast as a result of his third place yesterday. It doesn't sound like much, but it will be hampering his progress slightly as he's caught up in the traffic there. So, Lucas Auer was asked to, well, he was asked to give away the position to Lucas Auer. So, Lucas Auer in front, he's got all that hard work to do again. It's for the last of the points paying positions for P15, P14. That's where the two cars are running. Uh, just behind them is Patrick Niederhausen, Marvin Deanst in 13th place, and uh, Arjun Miney also at the front of that queue. Yeah, and uh, also Kelvin van der Linde is the race winner yesterday. It has 20 kilograms of success ballast, and he's trying to come from there to the back of the field. He's got one, he's got past David Schumacher on that last lap. But Kelvin back in 25th place. 
after winning yesterday and 10 kilograms of success ballast for Lauren Heinrich who was second yesterday. Uh, he's outside of the points at the moment in the uh, Porsche in the Team 75 Bernhard car. He runs currently 17th behind Patrick Niederhauser, not too far behind this battle we've been enjoying between Lucas Auer and Ricardo Fella. Uh, so here they come, downhill once again through this final sequence of uh, turns at turns 9 and 10. You're already about 130 kilometres an hour before you get onto the start finish straight. And it's downhill then until the very last bit of the straight where it suddenly climbs very steeply uphill into the braking zone and into the apex, flashing the headlights there, trying to find a way past Patrick Niederhauser. He's Lauren Heinrich, but he's not being uh, pressurised at the moment. Rennie Rast, Sheldon van der Linde, the gap starting to creep down. It's less than a second now, nine tenths, last lap, a 129.1 for van der Linde, 129.2 for Rennie Rast. They started to break away from the Porsche of Thomas Priney, 1.7 seconds between second and third. So the two BMWs, as long as it stays dry, are looking very strong indeed. The one, two, three have also broken clear of four place, fourth place Clemens Schmidt, Marco Wittmann in the background. So they're all spaced out a bit in the first First six, but there's an awful lot of fighting going on further back. Jack Aitken has still got his teammate Thierry Vermeulen behind him. Yeah, but not as close behind him as he was. Jack Aitken has pulled about nine tenths of a second clear now. Vermeulen was right behind him a couple of laps ago, as you remember. And uh, Vermeulen is for now keeping Frank Pereira at bay in 10th place. Luca Engsler in 11th, looking for more points after a good performance yesterday. Arjun Mini 12th. Marvin Deans 13th, Lucas Auer 14th, Ricardo Feller 15th, the other drivers uh, inside the points as it stands. So uh, Rene Ras makes his way out of turn 10, heads towards the line uh, again. Uh, we're about six and a half minutes away from the pit window opening. We've got 20 minutes in which to come in and make your mandatory pit stop. If there is a worry about some rain coming, then like yesterday, but the, for the other reason, we might see them pushing it as late as possible. Yesterday, it was a drying track, and most of them left it as late as they could to make the pit stops, just in case uh, the rain came again, which it did a couple of times. So you don't want to come in, change tyres, and then the opposite weather happens. You have to change back from a slick to a wet or a wet to a slick. So uh, what they don't want to do is come in at the start of the pit window, put more slicks on, and then it starts to rain. You have to come in and make a second stop. So I suspect, unless they're all looking at the weather radars and that threat of rain is now gone, I suspect there might be some fairly late pit stops in that 20 minute window. Marvin Dienst is pushing hard, isn't he? In 13th place, he's taking a completely different line to everybody else into the corners, going as wide as he dare without picking up a infringements for attack track limits. Now there is Mirko Bortolotti, 28th and last place. He's still 20 and a half seconds back from Alessio Delada. Of course, he's running in the same team as him, but uh, Delada's not going to back off and let him pass. Uh, so Bortolotti, he's 46 seconds adrift of the lead battle as well. He's got a lot of work to do and without a safety car he's going to struggle to get into the points today yeah leaders just going into turn nine Mirko's just coming out of turn three so it's yeah half a lap behind very lonely time all he can do is stay focused just keep pushing as hard as he can and hope from his point of view that something comes into play to bring you back into contention but as it stands as I said he's losing that championship lead to Thomas Prining Ricardo fella will be 31 points adrift, still very much in contention. Sheldon van der Linde will still just about be in contention. Rennie Rast will move up to fifth place all of a sudden in the standings, but would be out of the running uh, going into Hockenheim because there's only 56 points still to go. So, Rene Rast has a decision to make. Schubert have a decision to make somewhere between now and the chequered flag. Do you win the race or do you give five more points to the driver that could still win the championship for the team, which is the man behind him, Sheldon van der Linde. Now, look at this. This is uh, something that would absolutely terrify me. Looking back at the BMW of Marco Wittmann, you leave a gap, you leave an inch, Marco is going to fire it at the inside, which is exactly what he does here on the way to turn four. Fantastic move, late on the brakes, he gets ahead of Clement Schmidt, he goes wide on the exit, of course, because he was the last of the late breakers, but it's OK because there's a left-hander coming up as they go down into turn six, and Clement Schmidt will have nowhere to go but stay on the outside line here. So the BMW comes through, a great move from Marco Wittmann to put himself up to fourth place. And guess what we saw on the windscreen of that BMW, the rain, and uh, of the Lamborghini as well. The rain is starting to come down as Clemens Schmid now comes under pressure from Iron Chan Guen, but there is rain in the air. We can see moisture on some of the windscreens from the in-car cameras. Uh, this could be about to change the dynamic of the race. Yeah, it's not enough for them to uh, think about changing tyres yet, but again, it's something they're going to keep an eye on and it's going to affect when they come in and make that pit stop. 
on board with Sheldon van der Linde. Windscreen wipers on. There's not much rain, but it's just enough to notice because it always looks worse in the car when you're doing 240 kilometers an hour as we get Tom, Thomas Brining's radio. Well, I'm all in first. I'm pushing so hard that there's a bridge. So Thomas Pride, he's uh, like, I'm really pushing hard here, but he's struggling, isn't he, to keep up with the BMWs. He's well clear, though, of fourth, but only for now, because guess what? It's another BMW now in fourth place with Marco Bittman. 3.2 seconds between them, but Thomas Priding, in fairness to him, is uh, easily the highest placed and quickest at the moment non-BMW out there running in third position. Right, it's been declared a wet race. That doesn't mean it's totally raining yet, doesn't mean the track is wet, but it does mean you now have the option of putting on wet tyres, and that'll stay the case for the rest of the race. There's going to be some very late stoppers as Marco Wittmann, you see the back end stepping out as he breaks for the corner, really pushing hard in that BMW as he tries to close in, close in on Thomas Prining ahead of him. There's Dennis Olsen, he's closing on Aichen Guen. So this is Porsche versus Porsche, ahead of them is Clemens Schmidt. Yeah, absolutely. Dennis Olsen uh, qualifying fifth yesterday, which was his equal best of the season. Tenth today. Can he get stuck in here? Engine Gouin going well. Oh, the ponchos are coming on. <laughs> There's a sign that that rain is getting a little bit heavier now. The wind is certainly breezing up. It's pretty uh, cool 14 degrees today as the leaders come into turn one. Thomas Prining and then Marco Bittman. Prining's last lap was a 129, sorry, 130.1 which was actually 12 thousandths of a second quicker than Marco Wittmann. So he's keeping that gap back. Uh, <laughs> hands out, looking, uh, is that rain coming down or not? Uh, last lap for the leader, 129.6. Best lap, 129.1. So it does suggest that the times have gone off the ball a little bit by about four tenths, five tenths of a second, which suggests they're now starting to feel it. But don't panic, don't put the rain tires on now because we come in, change tires, and then have to change back to slicks. That's uh, worse than just sticking with these slightly slower lap times, but it will be a concern for them because when you're trying to control 500, 550 brake horsepower, slick tyres, and it starts to get greasy, then it can all go very wrong very quickly. So the drivers will have to be very much focused now uh, for this stage of the race. Yes, it is just very light spitting at the moment, but everybody's staring at the skies. Rene Rest and Sheldon van der Linde are praying that that rain does not fall because they do not want that to happen. Uh, we've had uh, Tim Heinemann, who's found a route past use of a Vega. That, though, is for 21st place. That's a long way back. Once again, we ride on board. Ricardo Feller still in 15th place, st still staring at the back at 14th place, Lucas Auer. So uh, Rasta's crept that gap back out a little bit now to 1.3, nearly 1.4 seconds. Sheldon van der Linde uh, goes through on that lap. Yeah, a couple of tenths slower. Uh, so the gap cr increases to over a second and a half now. Thomas Brining just flashing past the grandstands there into turn one. And then Marco Wittmann, who's still just over three seconds, 3.3 seconds uh, behind him. Pit window is opening now then, in this middle 20 minutes of the race. In eight seconds time, but again, don't be surprised if we don't see any pit stops for a little while. Here's a battle for fifth place between Clement Schmidt in the Lamborghini and then Ian Guen and Dennis Olsen. Dennis Olsen, a race winner in the championship last year, former star of uh, Porsche Carrera Cup in both the German series and in the, uh, the Super Cup. And a very welcome addition to the DTM, the Norwegian driver, and that bright green. A Manti EMA Porsche very much in this fight. There's nothing between these three cars at the moment. So uh, René Rass still leads the way. Sean van der Linde still holds the fastest lap of the race. That was back on lap six. But you do get the feeling that René Rast is just controlling this uh, one and a half seconds. Black and white flag for track limits has been shown to Andrea Coldarelli, who, of course, is making his debut in the DTM this weekend. So black and white flag, it is a warning. But if he gets many more of those, he could be picking up a penalty. In the background, I can see Kelvin van der Linde has caught up to Matthias Drudy and Sandro Olsen, so he might be picking up a couple more places, but still back in 25th position yesterday's race winner. The highest placed Audi is Luca Engsler in 11th place currently. Uh, right, we have got some peeling off into the pits, including Ricardo Feller, third in the championship. That's a bit of a surprise. So must be pretty confident that the weather's not going to change that much. Engsler, Miney and Bella are the first three to come in and make their stops. They're not the only ones, though, because in comes Sandro Olsen as well in the Project 1 BMW. The Amp Sports Line team are ready. Six to seven seconds is a really good pit stop stationary time. Rears are changed. They move across to the front. This is what it looks like on board. 
It's all pretty tight in that pit lane. That's a pretty good stop. We don't get the clock on it, but it didn't look bad. Not perhaps the best, but okay. Oh, look at how tight it is. Leading pit stopper is going to be Angsler still only just getting out, though, ahead of Arjun Mining. I think when you're caught up in the traffic like Ricardo Feller was, this is the gamble that you need to take. Get in there, do the pit stop, try and get out on some open track and hope like mad that it doesn't rain within the next 18 minutes. So that's what they've done. Engsler, good stop from Team Engsler. He's having his best run that we've seen for a very long time. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that so will be depressing for Feller, won't it? Yes, exactly <laughs> will. Yeah, going go side by side just in front of him as well. Sergeant Mardi trying to go around the outside of uh, Luca Engsler. So pit stop times there were 7.9 seconds uh, we have had for Ricardo Feller. Uh, so yeah, look, look, not quite as lightning as it could have been that. You want to be under seven seconds, ideally. 7.9 seconds for him. Exactly the same for Luca Engsler as well. 7.9 uh, seconds. Uh, so Arjumadi now trying to come around the outside and find a way through. Yeah, he had a slower pit stop, Arjumadi, at 9.6 seconds, but he's drawn alongside Luca Exler now. The Mercedes gets the run here as they charge side by side. Luke has to give uh, way to Arjumadi and the Indian driver in the HRT Mercedes comes through as they make their way uh, downhill now, out of turn six and into turn seven. Ricardo fell out, reeling them in all the time. Luca Stoltz is the next one to come in and make a pit stop. So Stoltz has come in. And uh, Thomas Brightling, you're right on board with now, is starting to be caught by Marco Wittmann. Only a, a little bit, but the gap's come down from third to fourth to under three seconds now. So we've had five cars that have come in for their pit stop. All of them were running in the traffic. So all taking the gamble, hoping that the rain doesn't increase. The leaders remain out. Rene Rast has pulled out four tenths on Sheldon van der Linde. So he's stretching his legs at the front a little. Thomas Brining have a relatively lonely race at the moment, as is Marco Wittmann. So they're all spaced out a little bit, but Clemens Schmid now coming under pressure. Ai Chang Gun has been reeling him in. Dennis Olsen there as well. Jack Aitken still in that eighth place. Yeah, and uh, Mario Engel will uh, uh, be looking to improve and get up the order, perhaps with a slightly different pit stop strategy as well. Another quick driver that's uh, qualified way out of position today. So, yeah, well, we'll be trying some different things here. It's all you can kind of do when you're stuck in the pack, as uh, Brian said. There comes Jack Aitken, Thierry Vermeulen and Prom Pereira through the shot in eighth, ninth and tenth positions. Then Deanst, our uh, Niederhauser still oh. with Heinrich behind him. Oh, that was drifting. Light, lighting up the time back <laughs> a little bit there, wasn't it? Tim Heidemann decided for the last minute to come into the pits. That was wonderful. It just needed to smoke him a bit more. I mean, they're not going to use him again, are they? So True. keeping to the speed limit, in comes Tim Heinemann in the Talksport WRT Porsche. The gorgeous livery. A little bit of rain on the bonnet as well. You can see there is a lot of water out there. He comes in to his pit box and his team will get to work. Leading pit stopper is Arjun Mine. He's just coming out of turn eight. Ahead of him, you've got uh, Mirko Bortolotti. He hasn't made his pit stop yet. That just shows how far behind he is. He's only just in front of those that have made a pit stop. Uh, Slow-mo on board with him. So just in, what's he got in his hand there? It's like a cup of tea to me. I don't think it is. <laughs> it's like the air intake, isn't it? They're sort of uh, fallen off, and he's holding on to that whilst you know driving at 260 kilometres an hour. One-handed driving there from Mirko Borsalotti. <laughs> Just what he needed today. Yes, yeah, a chilled afternoon. Uh, I think he'd rather be fighting up the front, wouldn't he? Uh, you can see how much of the apex and just a little bit over that they're taking as they come around the corner, kicking up the dust. We're staring at the pit entrance. The leaders go through it again. No surprises there. Don't think we're going to be seeing them for at least another 10 minutes or so. There comes Marco Wittmann. The rest of the field going as wide as they dare. You can see the orange marker bollards have long since passed <laughs> yeah. the company with their mounting holes. Rest in peace, rest yes, in peace, uh, we, we have got a, a bollard mountain out the back that's been wrecked today. Now, Ricardo Feller to the outside of Tim Heinemann. Yeah, and so he becomes the third best pit stopper uh, with uh, still Miney and Engstler ahead of him. So he gets past Heinemann as Heinemann gets his tyres up to temperature. So Miney there coming into your shot is the leading pit stopper in the blue and yellow. Mercedes followed by the Audis of Engstler and then number seven, Ricardo Feller, Andrea Caldarelli, he's coming into the pits now in the stunning gold and black livery uh, GRT Lamborghini and Matai Drudy, it, I can see from the commentary box window, is also coming into the pits in his uh, Tresor Orange Audi. So uh, we've got another, what's, uh, another 13, nearly 14 minutes of this pit window. Uh, Tim Heidemann and Lucas Stoltz now go wheel to wheel with Lucas Stoltz carrying the momentum of the Mercedes around the outside of him to be the fourth highest place pit stopper. Right, here we go. Yeah, so... Uh, Chuck it out the window. Yeah, there you go. What was that? 
I don't, I'm not entirely sure what that was. Was it part of the ventilation or something? I think so, yeah. I'm not actually sure the race stewards would uh, take too kindly to him throwing debris onto the track, but hey ho, he's done that. It's a bit dangerous having that rattling around in the car, though, isn't it? So you and on the track. Yeah, <laughs> well, possibly. It's only, I think, a little bit of light plastic, though. Right. Disposed of that, wound the window down, and off he goes. And uh, more and more rain spots coming on the windscreen of Mirko Bortolotti's car. It looks a little bit, little bit heavier now. So again, that's going to make them stretch this pit stop as long as they can. René Rast, then the race leader, coming through, looking for his 26th win in the DTM, his first win since Imola 2022. He's 1.9 seconds clear of his teammate, Sheldon van der Linde. Thomas Prining is four and a half seconds behind the leader in third. Marco Wittmann's 2.7 seconds behind Thomas Prining in fourth place as they make their way up into turn three, this very slow first gear, 50 kilometer an hour corner. Marvin Dienst is the next one into the pits for his stop. We're keeping to the speed limits. He's just come in. But all the leading cars, the top 15, 14 cars, are still stayed out. So uh, it's leaving it to as late as possible in the window. I think we might have lost Matthias Drudy. Looks like he's out of the car and walking down the, uh, the pit lane. Uh, so a uh, bad race for the Italian, I think. But the race leaders. Now starting to think, right, what, do, what are we going to do? Is this rain going to come or not? I mean, you can only kind of deal with the conditions you've got. And as it stands, it's definitely still slick tyres. So René Rast pushing on. Tyres looking in a good state. You see off the racing line, there's so much dead rubber, isn't there, that's been flecked up from not just this race, but all of these supporting races, as we hear from Sheldon van der Linden. Right now, turn three, no more rain. Okay, that. Rain at turn three, says Sheldon van der Linde, which is the highest point of the circuit. And it might be, Brian, that there are parts of the circuit where it's still dry, but parts where it's starting to rain now. It's the age-old problem, isn't it? When part of the track is dry and part of it's wet. Of course, a wet track on slick tyres, very tricky indeed, can catch you out. The top of the hill into turn three, that's the heavy braking zone as well, and your sharp right turn. Uh, you could do with a bit of traction up there, but they're going to be monitoring that very closely. But it doesn't look as though it's raining out on the pit straight, which is where we are situated. Jack Aitken has just peeled off into the pits. Yeah, he's gone for an early pit stop. Lauren Heinrich coming in as well. No surprise, because he was uh, stuck, wasn't he, uh, behind that uh, battle that's just ahead of him involving Patrick Niederhauser. Yeah, confirmation Matt Drudy is out of the race. He's still gone. They have to be weighed. Even if you're out of the race, you have to do the weigh-in. So he's walked down, I'm seeing Ben Wade looking very disconsolate. Uh, you have had several drivers disqualified this year for retiring from a race, but forgetting to go and get weighed afterwards. Not that it affects how many points they get, of course. So, Lauren Heinrich going back out for the his Team Bernhard squad. Jack Aitken is uh, oh, he's very low, that Ferrari, but I think that's the one that's uh, just flashed behind the barrier. So he's gone back out as well. And uh, look at this, Marvin Dietz knows the tail. Argentine looking to get up the inside. Not quite happening at turn one as the leading pit stoppers go into battle. And there's Tim Heidemann behind Lucas Stoltz, and they both uh, uh, drop back behind Andrea Caldarelli as well. As the crowd, thankfully, with a bit of cover here, watch with a very good vantage point trackside. Uh, they're staying dry though for now. Not that there's that much rain as yet. Mirko Bortoloni is up to 19th place, but of course that is as a result of the cars in front of him stopping and he still has to make a pit stop himself. So uh, not really troubling the point scorers at the moment. Right, it's Dennis Olsen in to the pits next. Uh, the Grello team get ready, Manti EMA getting ready to do their magic. Yeah, the best pit stop we've had so far is a 7.2 seconds for Martin Dix. That actually would tell a lot. We've had a seven second for Calderelli. That's why Calderelli got through. Uh, so the Grasser Racing team with a good start. Out goes uh, Dennis Olsen then, uh, released. He has to stick and adhere to the 50 kilometer an hour speed limit, which will feel like he's going backwards in one of these race cars. And it's quite a long run from their pit box to the pit lane exit. Once he goes past that white line, they'll be able to light up the tires and go for it. At the moment, it looks like he's gonna rejoin in pretty clean air here. Uh, we've still got, uh, well, we've got Jack Aitken as the leading uh, pit stopper now. Uh, because he made his pit stop on the last lap, then it's, it's going to be uh, Lauren Heinrich and Arjun Miney, second and third of the pit stoppers. Ricardo Feller then trying to gain a place here on Lauren Heinrich, uh, which he's, I think, going to do up the inside on the way into turn one, halfway alongside. You can stay on the outside here, though, which is exactly what Lauren does. And the Portugal Deutschland champion of 2022 holds onto the position, keeps the Audi behind him for now. Ricardo Fala having a much more frustrating race, finding it much more difficult to get through than he did in the damp conditions yesterday. 
and he's still stuck behind the Porsche as they get to turn three. Yeah, you can keep the power on round the outside. You saw him challenge again as we cut away. Now the rest of them are coming. Marco Wittmann, Clemens Schmid, Ian Changun, uh, Team Grasser have been reported to the stewards for unsporting behaviour. Not entirely sure what that is, but something to do with one of the pit stops, I've no doubt. Here comes Marco Wittmann into the pits. Yeah, and Fon Pereira in the background has come in as well for SSR performance in the Lamborghini. Rears change, fronts go on and off the jacks he's dropped the bmw that's from pereira having his pit stop that doesn't look particularly quick they're struggling with the front left tire so pereira who was tense before the pit stop window opened that's going to cost him big time we'll see what the time is like when it comes up on the screen but that looked like a slow pit stop i'm afraid yeah 14.9 seconds so that's a good seven eight seconds dropped in the pits that's a huge amount of time in the context of the race yeah a bit of a nightmare they rehearsed this so many times but in the racing conditions anything can happen everything's hot everything's sticky and that's just the mechanics uh, so uh, front pereira rejoins but he's lost a lot of time out on track he rejoins just in front of marco Wittmann. Uh, yeah, so uh, Marco Wittmann, Clement Schmidt coming in. Danny Salsman looked like he was about to line up a slingshot down the inside at turn three in the background. Randy Rass going to stay out for another lap? Yes, he is. Is his teammate? Yes, he is. And Thomas Priding, yes. that line suggests he's going to stay out as well. No surprises. Seven minutes or so remain. Uh, so they've got a few laps yet to make that decision and come in. And I'm not surprised they're leaving it uh, late. There's a big gap back now uh, from third place because we've had Marco Wittmann make his pit stop, of course. So these three uh, stay out, but oh, two thirds of the field have now made their pit stops. Uh, Lucas Sauer is going to move up the order. Patrick Niederhauser, Marrow Engel, likewise, because they've yet to make their pit stops. But here are more. This is going to be Thierry Vermeulen coming in now. Uh, Milfrey Racing, very good on their pit stops this year. Uh, Jack Aitken's pit stop was the quickest so far today and the quickest of the weekend. In fact, 5.9 seconds for wow. Jack Aitken. That could get him up from seventh place, which is where he was before the pit stop window started. Plumes of brake dust as they pull the wheel off, and now the car has dropped down off the ramps and rejoins, keeping to the speed limit. There is Thierry Vermeulen, who gets out just in front, lights the tyres up. Well, that's one way of heating them, isn't it? Uh, rejoins into the pit lane. Yeah, and it's going to be behind Dennis Olsen, Marvin Dietz, Jack Aitken's going to come through as well. So there they go, making their way out through turn one. Andre Mani's dropped back a little bit as well. And here comes Ricardo Fella looking to dive up the inside here of Luca Engs though. He's already got ahead of Laren Heinrich, look. So he's gained two places on that lap. And Ricardo Fella, for now, just knows he's in front of Luca Engs but only just. He's going to have the inside line when they get to the top of the hill at turn three though. Laren Heinrich is going to try and follow him throughout the inside, I reckon, here as well. On the brakes they come. Luca Engs still trying to hang on in there. You look back from Ricardo Fella. He's done it, he's got past Luger Engsler, and Engsler closes the door in time to stop Lauren Heinrich coming through as Thomas Priding comes into the pits to make his stop. A critical stop here for the Manti EMA team, the driver in third place in the race. The driver, who he's set to go into the championship lead with one weekend to go. Priding goes out, that looked like a good stop. 6.5 seconds. Only Jack Aitkins had a quicker stop than that. Brilliant stop from Manti EMA. They are so good at these pit stops. So he rejoins and uh, will have made good position as a result of that. Of course, we've still got three cars at the front uh, to come into the pits uh, and several others that weren't in the front battle. But uh, Rene Ras, Sean van der Linde still staying out till late in the window. Yeah, so uh, big, beautiful gap behind and in front. That's perfect. You don't come out in any traffic. That gives you time and space to get your tyres up to temperature uh, for Thomas Pride. <laughs> Here comes that battle between those that have made their pit stop as they all thunder past the commentary box, go over the start finish line. And uh, there you've got uh, the Marvin Dix Porsche being reeled in by Ricardo Feller in the Amps Sports Line Audi. Got another one in the pits, that's Sandra yeah. Holtz coming in and in then comes the BMW of Sheldon van der Linde making his way into that pit lane and he slows the car down to 50 kilometers an hour so the driver from second place in the race fourth in the championship comes in this one needs to be perfect so team get ready to go rear wheels first everything going well so far then across to the front limited number of people allowed to work on it and once again the cloud of brake dust that was a great stop very swift thomas priney he's only at turn eight at the moment so that was his nearest rival in the race thomas was third 
Uh, Sheldon was second before the pit stops happened. So into turn nine now for him. It's a long run down that pit lane then. Uh, back to coming to turn 10 is Thomas Priding. There he comes, flashing into your shot. Uh, the uh, green and yellow number 91 Porsche about to go over the start finish line. Ha will he be much closer to Sheldon van der Linde by the end of the lap? Because Sheldon's got to get his tyres up to temperature. Handily, look who's behind Sheldon van der Linde, <laughs> big brother Kelvin. That will be a relief when he looks in the mirror. But actually, I think the gap might be about the same. Maybe, if anything, maybe a little bit bigger. What was the stop like for Sheldon? Identical. Identical yeah. to Thomas Bryden. 6.5 seconds. There you go. Good job by both pit crews. Brilliant stuff. And Bryden, of course, with that open track, and the team did a great job getting him in and getting him out on the open track, which is exactly what they want. Rene Rast indicating to the right. I think he's about to come in. Yes, he is. So the second of the Schubert BMWs into the pits. Absolutely. So priming the uh, leading uh, pit stopper, then Vitman, then Olsen. But of course, Rene Rast, the race leader, now comes in to make his stop. Look at them poised, ready to go, <laughs> limbering up. Same. Stretch those calves, stretch those quads. Here we go. Right, rears off once again. A well rehearsed routine. They rehearsed it about one lap ago, didn't they? We looked through the dust and they dropped the car down. That was good. He's a bit slow off the blocks, though. Uh, spinning the wheels as he comes out. The time that he was stationary, 6.3, so two tenths quicker than Sheldon van der Linde. Yeah, absolutely uh, right. Arjun Marnie, by the way, has uh, got the fastest lap of the race last time around. 16th at the moment, but he'll move up the order once uh, the rest of the pit stops uh, happen here. And they're going to have to happen soon. Two minutes to go. David Schumacher, one of the drivers, coming into the pits at the moment. Right, Sheldon van der Linde thunders over the line with his brother Kelvin for company. Uh, Rene Rast will retain the net lead of the race. The leading pit stopper, Sheldon van der Linde, further back than he was before the pit window. There was less than two seconds between them. It's a bigger gap than that now for sure, but it will come down on this lap because it's going to take most of a lap. The smooth surface in particular for Rene Rast to get the tyres up to temperature. Right, second visit to the pits, but the first proper pit stop for Mirko Bortolotti, the championship leader. He is in that. Looked like a really good pit yeah. stop for SSR performance. They need everything to go right for them now to get him any championship points. So out goes Mirko Bortolotti. Here's a replay of him uh, having that drama with the... Uh, looking like the air vent. <laughs> it does sound like Deciding what to do with it, yeah. Yeah. Bit of plastic dropping off, chucks it out of the window. Hopefully it bounces off the circuit and... Uh, it gets well out of the way of everybody else. So Some souvenir hunter will have that. I'll be on a mantelpiece by tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, here comes yeah, Ray it Rath will. leading the way. Uh, so in theory, if we uh, go on the pit stop times, he should be about two tenths better than he was before they came into the pits. Of course, it doesn't quite work like mm. that. But Rene Rath still in a solid place. Morrow Engel is uh, up into... Uh, he hasn't stopped yet, so he's Just coming, coming in. in now. I was about to say, has he missed the uh, window? But no. And Morrow Engel to, into the pits for his stop. Kelvin van der Linde comes in with just over 30 seconds left before the pit window closes as well. 6.7 seconds uh, was the pit stop time for Mirko Bortolotti, so one of the best. There's Maro Engel uh, coming out of the pits, so Reddy Rast is already at turn one. So Maro Engel is going to come out, uh, I think, in the points for sure, somewhere around Thierry Vermeulen. I would think Thierry is just about to go over the start finish line. Right, pit stop for Abt. And this looks good as well. A very no. well rehearsed team and a little bit of a stuttering getaway, but Kelvin just trying to get a point out of this or some points if he can after that. Uh, being turned around at turn one at the very start of the race. So Thunderlinder goes out. Randy Rast will resume in the lead of the race. So look at this fearsome battle as Yosef Vega now tries to get stuck in. And uh, he possibly is going to gain a place here. Uh, but it's absolutely wheel to wheel as they come through. We've got Lucas Stocks in front of him as well. So he's going to try and urge him on. Come on, get out of the way. Try to get past Tim Eineman here. I want to break as late as I can. He does it, I think, or does he? Because Tim holds it around the outside here, keeps his foot on the gas, and I think stays ahead. He does. Yeah, he does, yes. He got that great traction out of turn three and now down the hill towards turn four. And the Vega's going to have a look to the outside. Is he? Yes, he is. They head towards turn four under the braking again. Heinemann has that line. Lucas Stoltz just a little bit in the way there for him, uh, but he keeps it all together and the Vega drops back behind Heinemann again. So the one that's come out of that pit stop sequence the best in terms of the, the top 10 is Dennis Olsen, isn't it? And it wasn't the quickest pit stop. It was a good one, but it wasn't the quickest. Uh, so you can only subscribe to the fact that Dennis must have had a really good in lap and a really good out lap to, to get up there. So he's going to be in the top five battle now as a result of this. Could be helpful for his teammates. You go on board with Lucas Hauer ahead. 
Marrow Engel trying to get his tyres up to temperature. The two Mercedes run together as they go through. No Sattel coming out of turn 10. Marrow Engel still look weaving, trying to get some heat into those Pirellis. <laughs> it's a fair cop, Gov. I'm not weaving to block him, honest. Uh, Marco Wittmann is the fastest man on the track at 128.778 that he's just set on this lap. But this fight continues. Marrow Engel and Lucas Howe running side by side. Turn two, which is taken absolutely flat out. Lucas Howe is going to have the inside line as they head up the hill towards turn three. Under braking, it's going to be advantage hour, but Engel will try and hang it around the outside. He can't make it stick, and it's Lucas Howe who has the position. Oh dear, I can see from the uh, commentary box window that Lucas Stoltz has come back into the pits and has driven straight into the garage. So a retirement for another of our top championship contenders. That's going to put him out of the running as well. So Rennie Rast, 2.9 seconds clear of Sheldon van der Linde. He did stretch the advantage by about a second during that pit stop phase. Van der Linde in second place. He's 2.9 seconds clear of Thomas Prining. So that gap is less than it was. And Thomas Prining is 3.3 seconds ahead of Marco Wittmann, which is a bit bigger, about half a second bigger than it was before the pit stops happened. So Prining has come out of this pretty well, even though he hasn't gained any positions. He's gained a bit of time there in third place. And then you've got Dennis Olsen, who's come up to fifth place through that pit stop phase. Clement Schmidt is now behind him in sixth. So Andrew Gouin seventh. Jack Aitken had the best pit stop, but overall through the window with the in and the out laps, he's dropped back to eighth place. Thierry Vermeulen is ninth. Archer Miney going great guns in tenth place. 17 minutes of this race remaining. The pit stops are all done and dusted. The pit window is closed. So unless it rains, it's as you were all the way to the chequered flag. The question is about whether Rene Rass would have to give way to Sheldon van der Linde as part of the Schubert Motorsport team. I think we're starting to see the answer to that question. Uh, Ricardo Feller, he has not stopped pushing from the moment he sat in the wheel of that car, really pushing forwards, but he's still a lot further back in 15th place with just one point if the race finishes now. Yeah, Mirko Bortolotti, 26th place, the last of the runners. We've lost uh, Sandra Olsen as well. We've lost Lucas Stoltz. We've lost Mattia Drudy uh, from the race. So, yeah, Ricardo Fella just on for the World Championship point at the moment. Shelton van der Linde on course for 20 if he finishes in second place. Uh, and Thomas Prining, 16 points for third. No points at the moment for Mirko Bortolotti. So Prining will move into the championship lead by 10 points. Ricardo Fella will be 21 points adrift with 56 available. And Sheldon van der Linde, as it stands, 42 points adrift with 56 available. They will mathematically be the four that could still win the championship. Lucas Stoltz, fifth in the championship, out of the race uh, today after what's been a really good run for him of late. Uh, but it looks like his uh, title hopes, which were relatively slim anyway, have now ended. The title hopes for any Rast are going to end as well. But I don't think he's even probably thinking about that. All he's trying to think about is winning the race, getting out of here, <laughs> becoming a dad again. <laughs> Yes, he probably wants to get home as quickly as possible. I check good, quickest of anybody in sector two. So he's pushing on still in seventh place. Some wonderful shots mm. as the cars bounce over the curbs, particularly the Lamborghinis, Ooh. the sparks <laughs> go flying. Uh, November the 5th has come early at the Red Bull ring. Yeah, no smoking around here, except for on the tires of the body work. That is uh, dramatic, isn't it, those slow-mos? Sparks coming off the wheel guns as well. And uh, look at that, all that hot brake dust. Oof. How they do these pit stops in six seconds is incredible, really. You've got to work so quickly, but not panic. Uh, Kelvin van der Linde back in the pits. This could be for retirement, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah he's going to go straight into the box. Not going to get anything out of the race. So Kelvin out. A win yesterday, which was fantastic. He celebrated what was a great drive, a great day for the team as well. But not today. It's not to be. So Kelvin van der Linde retires. But if you set him at the start of the weekend, you're going to get a win this weekend. I think you would have taken that. I wonder if he did get damage from that incident on the, the opening lap because uh, he hasn't had the pace all race long. Uh, you can see how hard uh, Sheldon van der Linde and Thomas Browning are pushing. Uh, we were talking about track limits over lunch, weren't we? How you go out wide and then cut back in to try and get inside where the markers would be. But uh, track limits here at the Red Bull Ring, well, what track limits? They're out in the car park at the points. Uh, this is a long turn two. They don't lift off for turn two. It is a turn, but it's flat out up the hill to turn three. We're up to 58,600 euros plus for race laps for Wells in Africa. BWT and the ADAC donate four euros for every combined racing lap. They've raised 110,000 euros to help clean 
uh, provide clean water and wells in African countries like Tanzania, uh, Tanzania and uh, Gambia. And we're already up to over 56,000 euros this year. So it's a fantastic uh, cause that and a great job done uh, in that partnership. Uh, right, fastest lap of the race, Marco Wittmann last time around, 128.4, three tenths quicker than Thomas Prining. The gap from third to fourth down to less than two and a half seconds. There is big Marco. He is coming. He wants his first podium of the year. He also wants to get Project One's first podium in the DTM in their first season of the championship. Well, I'm taking bets on a one, two, three for BMW on the podium. I was taking bets before we even got here. We knew they were going to be strong, but Marco Wittmann has been putting in those fastest laps, lap after lap. He keeps turning all the sectors purple. There's Kelvin van der Linde, the end of his afternoon. It was a good day yesterday, but today's the one he's going to want to forget. Puts Mirko Bortolotti up to 24th. I think Mirko's going to be 23rd soon because he's catching his teammate Alessio Deleda pretty quick, but he's still way off the points. Top 15 score points in DTM. Uh, Ricardo Feller still holding on to that last championship point. It could be a critical point. You've got Luca Engstler breathing down his neck, though. There's only half a second between the pair of them. They're the top two Audis battling for just one point. Very good by the Audis were first and third yesterday. What a difference the day makes and what a difference the weather has made to them. So Engstler trying to get a point, but Ricardo Feller will make that a very, very wide Audi because he knows that this championship where it's been single figures between the top two of the championship for almost all of the season, then those single points might just make the difference at the end of the year. On board then with Thomas Priding in third place. Let's hear from him on Team Radio. Uh, how much is it again? Copy, copy. Radio loud and clear. Yep, 2.4, 2.4. Well, that was a while ago because it's 2.7 now. How much is the gap, says Thomas Prining. And uh, yeah, he's just, uh, just done an absolute personal best through the first sector. So Tommy's pushing hard as well. He knows how important it is to get 16 points rather than 13. That's three more points if he stays third rather than dropping fourth. And of course, he wants the silverware. He wants to get to the podium. Uh, it will be his first podium for four races. He got second in race one at Saxa Ring, followed by fourth, then sixth. Then uh, yesterday, he's... Uh, now trying to get that what will be another podium finish for him. He's had one win, two seconds, two thirds so far this season. So Tommy Priding into turn one. Marco Wittmann trying to hunt him down. Dennis Olsen just complaining about the balance of the car yesterday. Be a good day today though. A sparks fly from Clement Schmidt just behind him. The Lamborghini running, running at the top six. And then we got Guen in seventh, Aiken in eighth, Vermeulen in ninth, and Miney in tenth place. I don't know what skullduggery has been going on in the pit lane, but there's another team now being uh, reported for unsupport unsporting behaviour, and that's Project One, along with GRT Grasser. So the stewards have got something to look at there with the teams. Don't think it will affect the outcome of the race, but it's high drama both on the track and in the pit lane. Unsporting behaviour, were they, were they booing all the other pit stops or something? <laughs> uh, right. So uh, they're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, we're keeping an eye on Ricardo Fella, trying to get this single championship point. You look back from him, he's 15th. Luca Engstler is 16th. And then Lauren Heinrich in 17th after being on the podium uh, yesterday. They're fighting for this final championship point. Andrea Caldarelli is catching them as well in the gold and black. Grasser Racing Team Lamborghini in his debut weekend in the championship. Uh, the Porsche looks the quicker of the three at the moment, doesn't it, Lara Heinrich? So this could be a very busy final 10 minutes or so for Ricardo Fella, the driver third in the championship. 2.6 seconds is the gap between Thomas Prining and Marco Wittmann. So Marco still pushing for that last of the podium positions. Luca Engstler, well, he's having a reasonable race, but have you ever seen such a fight for the last point paying position <laughs> in a race? It is Ricardo Feller there at the moment. Let's have a listen to Team Radio with Marvin Dienst. Slightly gaining to Pereira, and you're driving away from Feller. You're driving away from Feller. Good job. Yeah, so Marvin Dienst 14th. From Pereira after that slow pit stop, dropped from 10th to 13th place. Way out wide. Coming out of the final turn goes Ricardo Feller. He's just giving himself a little bit of breathing space now over Luca Engsler, who's about a car length clear of the 17th place Porsche of Lauren Heinrich. So the race leader, Rene Ras, 2.7 seconds clear. The tyres are okay, he's just at a personal best first sector. 128.5 on the last lap, 128.7. Sheldon van der Linde. So the gap came down, but only fractionally between the top two. 
Uh, 2.8 seconds behind van der Linde in third is Thomas Prining. He's 2.8 seconds clear of Marco Wittmann as well. So that pressure has uh, come away for a bit. Now, Alessio Deledo has been caught here by Mirko Bortolotti, his teammate, but this is only for 23rd place in the race. It's been a lonely and frustrating race for the championship leader. And he's about to fall down to second place in the standings with two races to go. So up the hill towards turn three, Alessio Delada not going to be putting up too much of a fight, I don't suppose. <laughs> Having said that, he's still it. holding on there, but I think Portolotti's going to uh, power around the outside. They don't want to be falling out on this occasion. So out towards turn four, the two SSR Lamborghinis are running together. It's a position for Portolotti. Right, let's uh, get some news down in the pit lane with Verena. And I'm here with Calvin van der Linde. Calvin, yesterday, a big high winning the race. Today, a low retiring the race. I guess it just feels really shit, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's back to reality. We saw in qualifying what the true basis of the Audi in the dry. Uh, we had 20 kilos on top in the race. So I think regardless of retiring the car today, I don't think we lost any points. I don't think we could have fought in the top 10 today. So, um, yeah, big shame. But I think it makes even more proud what we achieved yesterday. Uh, with the same car. So I think yesterday's down to the team and uh, a great strategy and we're going to take that motivation for Hockenheim. That's good. Thank you very much, Kelvin. Back to you. Thanks, Verena. Yeah, terrific uh, job by Kelvin yesterday to get his fifth win in the DTM and his first uh, since October 2021. Super slow-mo replay of Mirko Bortolotti, number 92, going around the outside of his teammate Alessio Deleda for 23rd position in the race. Now, uh, fastest first sector, fastest second sector of the race have just gone to Sheldon van der Linde. He would like the win. He wants five more points and his second win of the season. But he's got 2.8 seconds to try and bridge to his teammate René Rast, who goes over the line now. Rast crosses the line and his lap time is a 128.5. He's done a personal best lap, but the best lap of the race with the 128.465 goes to Sheldon van der Linde. Their cars are flying. The gap comes down fractionally. They're the two quickest drivers on track. Thomas Priding in third does a 128.8, four tenths behind them. Uh, but he is a bit quicker than uh, Marco Wittmann. It is a low one minute 29. With a little over six and a half minutes of this race remaining, Sean van der Linde is into the territory of needing René Rast to have a problem uh, because he's really going to struggle to reel in 2.7 seconds in six and a half minutes. Marco Wittmann still pushing uh, to catch up with Thomas Prining, but it's still 2.8 seconds. So that big march forwards that we saw earlier on, it feels like it has faltered a little now. And Thomas Prining looking pretty solid in that third place. He is indeed, yeah. Prining, again, is going to continue this run of being in the points in every single race of the uh, championship so far. So 14 out of 14 point scoring finishes. And the same is true at the moment of Ricardo Feller, albeit he's only going to score one point for 15th place as it stands. You look back from his Audi now. There he is still with uh, Hassels coming from Luca Exler in the red, white and blue. Nicky Molly Audi, he's there in 16th. Lauren Heinrich is closing all the time, but can't find a way past in the Kustin Bernhard Porsche. There in 17th. Bearing in mind, he's got 10 kilograms of success ballast on the car as well, which will make it heavier under acceleration, heavier under braking, more wear on the brakes, more wear on the tyres as well. So the battle for 15th place and for that valuable championship point. As it stands, Ricardo Fella is still going to be in the championship fight. 21 points is a Fairly big gap to try a bridge, but we've seen it happen before in the DTM in the final weekend of a season. And Brian, what happened to Mirko Bortolotti at turn one? It's just these instances, these moments that can change a championship. One moment, it's all going great guns. You want the championship to go on forever. And then the next, something goes wrong. And suddenly, you don't score any points and you lose the championship lead. Yeah, Mirko Bortolotti wanted another 20 races, didn't he? Uh, Hockenheim next time out, there will be 50 points on offer just in the race itself, apart from qualifying. And just to remind you, as was the case last year at Hockenheim, it all turns around very, very quickly. So as you say, you only need one incident and suddenly it's all turned on its head. Ricardo Feller in 15th place, Luca Exler behind him. Uh, there is uh, also Laren Heinrich in the queue, Andrea Coldarelli, Patrick Niederhauser now also joining in with the fight. So it's a five-car battle for the last remaining point. Ricardo Fellow on Team Radio. You think we got some pace? If you look to the guys in front, how they are driving away? Mamma mia. <laughs> Shut up, Mamma mia. I don't tell you what is happening much more in front of us. Sheldon just did a 28-4. 
It's talent, mate. It's just talent. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty chilled out, Ricardo. It's just talent, he says. <laughs> yeah, Ricardo's doing 129.9. The race leaders are doing high 128, slow 129s a second a lap. And pretty much the difference between them. They're just driving away from me. He said, we got no pace to anybody in front of us. <laughs> just a little dig at BOP, I think that was, wasn't it? I think. <laughs> Look how close they get. Audi versus Audi. Fella versus Engsler. Luca Engsler enjoying his debut year in the DTM. Uh, still looking for that first podium position at the moment, looking to get into the points. He would dearly love to break Ricardo's fellas of uh, his record of point scoring this season. Ricardo lurks under control at the moment, though. Right, the gap from first to second, 2.7 seconds, almost matching each other exactly through the first sector of this lap as well. And uh, the gap remaining pretty similar through the longer middle sector. Will it come down or not? Is Rennie Rask going to take the win? Is he going to help his teammate out? Shelton van der Linde needing the points, every point for the championship fight. And Rennie Rask is out of it now. Certainly pushing on his, the BMW of Marco Wittmann for Project One. Looking to equal his best result of the season so far with a fourth. So there is, as it stands, a 10-point swing oh, difference with Thomas Pryding ahead of Mirko Bortolotti. And that was uh, from nine points behind at the start of the weekend. Ricardo Feller, 31 adrift, 52 adrift, Sheldon van der Linde. They will be the four contenders at Hockenheim as it stands. René Rastler up to fifth place in the championship after what's been a great weekend. Fourth yesterday, he's winning today and he is 2.7 seconds clear still of Sheldon van der Linde. There's two and a half minutes left on the clock, plus one lap in the race. Thomas Prining looks set for third place and another podium finish to add to the win he got at the Norris Ring, the seconds he got at Zandvoort and Saxon Ring. The third place finishes he got at Oschersleib, and that could have been a win as well, couldn't it? And Nürburgring uh, to get another podium position, the seventh of the season. Uh, and there's uh, Thomas's dad, who's watched him all the way through his karting career there to the left of the picture. The family watching on. They are here to support him. They always come to the Austrian route. I say always, it's only his second season. Uh, last year they saw him win, but this will be a big, big podium. He will be very pleased if he can get third place here. Could have got a third place yesterday, of course, as well, had he not been asked to give uh, the position back to Maro Engel, which ended up dumping him down from third to sixth. So René Rast and Sheldon van der Linde, their fears about the rain coming appear to have not been uh, anything too serious that has happened. And uh, now the challenge for Al Andre, Andrea Calderelli by Patrick Niederhauser for 18th place. So running side by side, GRT Grasser enjoying their home race down towards turn four. And uh, Calderelli on the inside, but around the outside goes Patrick Niederhauser. Calderelli will try and fight back. But I think Patrick Niederhausen, does he have the legs? No, they run side by side still around towards five and six, still running side by side. And finally, Niederhauser squeezes in front. Yeah, nicely set up move that. You see that quite a lot here at uh, the Red Bull Ring. You swing on the outside of turn four, then cut back for that sequence of corners, downhill through the right at five and the double left at turn six and seven. All over the shop at the moment is called the rally. So Schumacher gets the chance to draw alongside him now. Uh, in the Mercedes on the run down into turn 10. The Mercedes is on the inside. And through goes Schumacher. He gains a place as well. So called the Ready has gone from 18th down to 20th place as we're into the final minute of the race. Now the leaders have already gone through. They're heading up towards turn two. So one more lap at the end of this one. The clock is about to run out. We're a lap and a half away from the end of the race. Yes, and Vega now gets past as well. So Heinemann and Vega getting past. Four places lost for the Lamborghini. He's in trouble, isn't he? Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the traction is starting to uh, disappear, I think. Andrea Calderelli's been great to have him in the series. Rene Rast is on the team radio. Yeah, to the safe. So, we got the last lap coming up. I think that was from Rene Rast, yeah, but you're safe. So, uh, here he is, leading the way, looking for his... First win as a BMW driver, remember Rene Rast. He thought he was going to get that in the Norris ring. Then a young charge called Thomas Prodding threw one down the inside, going into the hairpin and uh, got the win in the end. But onto the final lap of the race goes Rene Rast. Into turn one he goes. He's 2.3 seconds clear of Sheldon van der Linde. Sheldon has been catching him up. Thomas Priding looks set for third place and to move into the championship lead with two races to go at Hockenheim. Here's a replay. This is looking back from Ricardo Feller. What's happened here? Sideways and into a spin for Luca Exler. That delays Lauren Heinrich as well. So that should be 
Uh, Ricardo Feller secure now in 15th place and getting that championship point. Yeah, that's a yeah, bit of a get out of jail free card, really, isn't it, for Ricardo Feller? That's under investigation by our race stewards. That's Laren Heinrich and Luca Engsler. But it's Rene Rast on the final lap of the race, leading the way. Teammate Sheldon van der Linde in second. They've been around turns four, up towards turns five. BMW first and second. Yeah, Schubert Motorsports 2022 teams champions, 2022 drivers champions with Sheldon van der Linde. They won with Sheldon at the Norris Ring this year. And here they go, looking for their second win of 2023 with Rene Rast coming through. Luca Engsler comes into the pits, but Rene Rast is almost home and dry. Over the crest, over the brow he comes. And it's going to be win number 26 for Rene Rast, the three-time champion. Check out the of course, goal. we were never going to go through a whole season with that. Rene taking the win, and he gets all 25 points. Rene yeah. Rast wins! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well done. Well done, mate. Pick up, maximum pick up, maximum fuel saving. <laughs> they are delighted. One, two in qualifying, one, two in the race. They're also happy at Mantai MA because Thomas Pranik has crossed the line in third place and picks up the championship lead. He resumes the championship lead and his home race has been pretty kind to him. So Rene Rast wins. Second place for Sheldon van der Linde, third for Thomas Prining, and there is a photo opportunity for BMW fans. <laughs> Marco Wittmann wasn't third, he was fourth, but they all line up together now. Good uh, drive from Marco as well. Mirko Bortolotti, after a troubled afternoon, came home in 22nd place. Well, he hasn't yet. He's about to come home in 22nd place, and that will be out of the points. So zero points for Mirko Bortolotti, but he will bounce back at the Hockenheim ring for the final round. Look at this, though. Slowing down lap. Jubilant scenes. The steamroller that is Schubert Motorsport BMW. Yeah, so uh, this is kind of what we were expecting after the... Uh test on Thursday where Rennie Rass was quickest, Sheldon van der Linde was up there as well and in the dry and free practice Sheldon was quickest in one of the sessions but then the rain came yesterday, threw the whole thing on its head and it was Audi that took the race victory with Calvin van der Linde but we knew if it was dry, if all things stayed equal, the BMWs were going to be really hard to beat around here, they've had a one, two, four finish. Uh, there's Arjun Mighty as well with his second top ten finish in as many weekends so things started to go the right way now for Arjun after struggling mainly in qualifying to get his uh, tyres up to temperature, but his race pace once again good, so he's uh, had a nice, strong top 10 finish there. So in terms of the championship, no points for the championship leader, Mirko Bortolotti, 16 points for Thomas Prining, second in the championship at the start of the day, now the championship leader, and uh, then a point for 15th place for the driver, third in the standings, Ricardo Feller, and Sheldon van der Linde, fourth in the championship, 20 points, for getting second place. That keeps him in the championship hunt going into the final round in a few weeks' time at Hockenheim. What will the weather be like there in mid-October? Who knows? Rene Rast then the winner. A 1-2 for Schubert Motorsport with Sheldon van der Linde coming home in second place. Third place goes to Thomas Prining, Marco Wittmann fourth, Dennis Olsen fifth, Clement Schmidt, a good drive to sixth, Ayngen Guwen seventh, Jack Aitken in eighth, then Thierry Vermeulen ninth, and Arjun Miney rounding out the top 10 here in the final race of the weekend at the Red Bull Ring. Then we had Lucas Auer in 11th, Maro Engel 12th, from Pereira 13th, Marvin Dienst 14th and Ricardo Feller 15th as the other points finishers outside of the points. Uh, some big names, including, of course, retirement for Kelvin van der Linde back in 22nd after that puncture with the contact through the opening lap for Mirko Bortolotti uh, out of the points as well, although he did finish the race. So the cars make their way uh, back into the, uh, the pit lane. We'll have the podium presentations, of course, uh, coming up. So 14 races complete, two to go. Championship still wide open. And look at that. 59,636 euros raised for race laps for Wells in Africa with almost 15,000 combined racing laps complete this year. So there is the left of the picture, Sheldon van der Linde getting out of the car, but we walk up towards Rene Rast who clenches his fists, punches the air and taps the car on the head. Thanks very much, he said, you did a good job. And that's his first win as a BMW driver in the DTM. Superb from start to finish. Untouchable, really. Controlled the race. And Rene Rast shows why he was the champion in 2017, 2019 and 2020. And why he has won 26 races now in this championship in just a short amount of time he's been involved in the DTM. He gets on the scales uh, to get weighed. 
and signs the paperwork and then we'll see him I'm sure running towards the team they applaud him and they applaud Sheldon van der Linde as well a great Sunday for Schubert Motorsport and Rene Rast up into the top five in the championship after a great weekend as well his second best weekend of the season following that uh, pair of second place finishes at the Norris ring but he gets the win this time and uh, Thomas Prining Third place celebrates, but not celebrating is that man, Mirko Bortolotti. It couldn't have gone much worse for him, but he's only 10 points behind, and that, in the context of the championship, is nothing. It's going to be wide open at Hockenheim, but priding back into first position by 10 points. Ricardo Feller and Sheldon van der Linde are the other championship contenders. Rene Rast fifth, but he can't win the championship. And sixth place out of the race and out of the championship fight now is uh, Lucas Stotz because he had that DNF today. So only the second time this season that Mirko Bortolotti has failed to score points. It'll be a bitter pill to swallow. It's been a difficult weekend for him, but he is a rapid driver. We know the car is good and he will never, ever give up. It should be quite the fight, Brian, at Hockenheim. Yes, and Hockenheim, which always throws up surprises, as you already said, who knows what the weather's going to be doing there. It might even be snowing the way things are going at the moment. Uh, but uh, Rene Rast, uh, well, he's the happiest man here at the Red Bull Ring this weekend. Let's go down to Verena in the pit lane. And I've got the man here who's fourth in the championship, and it's his fourth podium. So congratulations, Sheldon, for uh, uh, second place. And I guess you're pretty relieved and pretty happy about that. Yeah, definitely. After yesterday, we had such a difficult day. Uh, I can't even explain. The guys' heads were all on the floor. I wanted to do this one for them today, just to, to get the mood back up again. We had a very tough day yesterday, and obviously, congrats to Rene for an amazing race. He was flawless all, all race long. Tried to get close to him in the beginning, uh, side by side into turn two, and I thought, yeah, this is maybe a bit too close to home, you know. So, uh, But he did a great, great job, obviously, and uh, yeah, he deserves the win. You did a great job. Thank you so much, Sheldon. Back to you. Thanks, Farina. And uh, yeah, difficult day yesterday. I'll go back to qualifying this morning as well. Shelton van der Linde was pretty much the last one to cross the uh, finish line. And he was 10th at the time. And he pulled something special out of the bag to get himself on the front row of the grid. And that is what's given him really the chance to stay in the championship fight and get a, a fourth podium of the season here. So the Pridings are absolutely delighted uh, with third place. Uh, that will do nicely. Sixth podium of the year for Thomas Priding in third place. And he is the first driver to be called up onto the podium. We'll have our top three drivers. We'll have our winning team represented as well, Schubert Motorsport. But for Manti EMA, with a spring in his step, Thomas Priding, he's looked focused all weekend, finally gets a smile. And Sheldon van der Linde is cheered onto the podium as well in second place. Looking pretty happy with that. The defending champion still has a chance of keeping his number one on the car. It's a slim one, but it's a chance. And Rene Rast wins for the first time in 2023, makes his way up onto the top step of the podium. It has been a great day with pole position and a race win. And Schubert Motorsport will celebrate with a big cheer, a one-two finish of the DTM. That is never an easy thing to achieve and they'll be uh, collecting their silverware as well. But now it's time for our race winners national anthem. <laughs> The German national anthem plays for Rene Rast. It's been a while. It was always going to happen again, though, wasn't it? And that's the 12th different winner of the season. Quite incredible. 14 races and 12 different winners. How open is this championship been? And Fred Lenga from the Spielberg region presents the winner's trophy to Rene Rast, who hoists it aloft. The replica of the ball, that huge bull statue here at the Red Bull Ring that's in the middle of the circuit. And a Grubrecht uh, presents the second place trophy to Sheldon van der Linde, who's pretty happy with uh, that. And uh, we're going to get another st uh, star of the ski slopes here. Kathy Leensberger from the Austrian ski team presents the third place trophy to Thomas Breiling. Sixth trophy of the year for Thomas. 
But it's the points that he wanted most, and it's the points that have got him at the head of the field. Connie Hooter, we saw on the grid at the start of the race, another uh, multiple World Cup event winner in Austria's ski team. That's the winning team's trophy for Schubert Motorsport here at the Red Bull Ring. So the drivers and our team representative will uh, make their way onto the top step of the podium now for photos, and then you know what's going to happen next. It's the race to unfurl the champagne and run for cover if you don't want to get covered in the sticky stuff because here comes the champagne here at Spielberg. <laughs> Thomas Priding gets ready Rash straight in the face. Shelton van der Linde gets covered as well. And the team representative for Schubert runs away. Celebrations here on the podium. The rain threatened. It started to come. It never really became a factor in the race, unlike yesterday which gave us a real thrill. It's been a terrific weekend of racing here at the Red Bull Ring. We're looking forward now to two more races and a championship decider, a four-way fight for the 2023 championship on the 21st and 22nd of October at Hockenheim. So in a few weeks' time, we'll know who's going to be the champion. But for now, we've got absolutely no idea, and that's just the way we like it. So Rally Ras celebrates. He's down there with his teammates, and we'll take a look at the championship standings. Thomas Prining, 190 points to drive a fifth in the championship last year. He leads. Mirko Bortolotti was fourth in the points last year. He's second on 180. Ricardo Feller, 159 points, is third. And Sheldon van der Linde on 138 points is fourth. They are the four that can still win it, with 56 points still available. At uh, Hockenheim, though, it's going to be a very tall order for Sheldon. He needs a perfect weekend and for others to have a nightmare. But at least he goes there with a chance, albeit a very small one. Uh, there are the rest of the points uh, scorers for 12 different winners. We've had two thirds of the field up on the podium so far this year. OK, let's get some more post-race reaction down in the pit lane with Verena. And I'm here with Thomas Preining, who's now again leading the championship. You guys are making it really exciting. You managed to get points in every single race. You managed to get from P4 to P3 and you're leading again. So how excited are you about that here in Austria and your home race? Yeah, it's a, it's a good day, I have to say. A lot better than yesterday. Uh, all in all, I really, really, really enjoyed this weekend and I'm super grateful for all of my fans that came out. It's, it's really special for me and obviously to top it off like this is, is amazing. And you were pushing so hard. I mean, what was it like out there? Honestly, I was flat out from, from start to finish. Um, I got a hit at the start from, from Aitken, I think. I, I feel very fortunate that uh, nothing really broke on the car. And um, yeah, other than that, it was a quite lonely race. I was just doing my best to try and catch them. They drove away and Wittmann closed in, but in the end, everything worked out just fine. And I'm just really relieved that, that we had a good day. All right, thank you so much, Thomas. Really relieved and very excited. So let's see, René is still in an interview. I'll grab him just a bit, so back to you. Thanks, Farina. Yeah, you can almost see the relief writ upon uh, Thomas Prining's face, can't you? It's a lot for the young man to handle here. All this pressure dealing with these great GT3 racers, but he is a great himself now as well. Uh, we've seen his family uh, here supporting him this weekend. I suspect they'll be going online and booking their tickets and flying out to Hockenheim in a few weeks' time. So from their point of view, hopefully see a great championship battle. Uh, from Brian Oliver and me, Chris Hartley, that's it in the commentary box. Let's go back to the pit lane and Verena. And I've got the winner here, René Ras. Congratulations, the first victory uh, in this season. And you've got to be absolutely thrilled from P1 to victory, right? Yeah, it was an amazing day so far. Uh, my first victory with BMW, obviously, as everybody can imagine, it wasn't easy after 10 years with, uh, with Audi going to BMW new environment, but still, you know, uh, my first victory feels so special. The team did an amazing job, they deserved it, uh, great pit stop, and uh, today was just an incredible day, and hopefully it continues like that. And you did say that you wanted to be quick in the race, to come home quicker, so did you hear anything from home yet? Is it still quiet? Uh, still quiet, I haven't heard anything, but I'm gonna jump in the car soon and then head off home and hopefully get my, my third present after pull the victory. Maybe my, my second child will be born today, so I'm gonna rush. All right, you do that, but drive safe, make sure. So congratulations, best of luck. Fingers are crossed for you and your wife. And now, of course, after this really exciting race we can hear in Spielberg, we're so much looking forward to the grand finale at the Hockenheim Ring in four weeks. You do not want to miss that, so see you then. Bye-bye, take care. Here are the highlights.